little um, Atari ST and Amiga compatible mouse. I'm sorry for the state of my fingers. Working hands. Um, so you can switch it between the two modes, uh, which I've had for about 10 years, I think now. Uh, I used to use it for testing the um, uh, the work in progress graphical operating system. Working on it for quite some time, huh? And uh, as you can see, it's been lying in the drawer for a while and it's gone rather yellow. So what I'd like to do is show you um, how I'm retro brighting things in the winter. Uh, I know there's been some of the bigger uh, retro tech channels have done some uh, pretty good videos on this topic. Uh, but I did notice uh, Jan Bita, <coughs> whose channel I like very much, um, using a grow light um, <coughs> that I think he'd got from his mother, actually. Uh, on Amazon and while that particular model wasn't uh, available uh, when I had a look I did pick something cheap up off eBay very cheap in fact it cost 20 quid 20 GB pounds and uh, tried it and eventually when I refined the technique it actually worked very well so what I thought I would do is uh, just step through the process of what I'm doing at the moment with regards to retrobiting and uh, show you the results. So it'll take a while to film this one, of course, because I've got to let it process. Uh, but this is a great uh, example uh, to use, I think, because it's supposed to be an off-white colour, as you can see on the bottom here, and it's a horrible sort of uh, mustard colour now. And uh, I have used this uh, technique on a couple of computer cases. Uh, I need a bigger box, but I'll show you the box that I'm using, the whole setup. Uh, but it does work very, very well indeed. So the grow light in question is this one here, and it's a, a fairly anonymous looking affair. I've just written 300 watts on the back because it's supposed to be 300 watts, but it ain't. I haven't measured what it draws yet, but it's not going to be anywhere near that. I think this is supposed to be effective brightness compared to uh, traditional lighting sources. Uh, but anyway, there's not much to it. As I say, it was 20 quid. It's only got a couple of... Uh, UV lamps, UV LEDs on the front. The rest, it's supposed to be full spectrum. It's it's not, uh, but it is very bright and it puts out this pink light. It's quite. I think for the price, it's uh, and the fact that it does work. Um, I'm not going to complain too much. It's got two cooling fans on the back and it actually warms the plastic up as well a little bit, um, which is rather useful. I've seen that this does help uh, the process a little bit. Warmth, um, not too much, obviously. I did once melt. Um, a set of Atari ST keys in a pan of water. Uh, well, I'll try and forget about that. Um, they weren't mine either. So, <laughs> yes, that was a that was a bad day. Oh, the the owner was very very nice about it. He had another keyboard. It was from abroad actually, but never mind. Um, but see, so, yeah. So this is what I'm going to use, and uh, I'll take you over to the setup that I've got. Uh, and show you how it is uh, operated. Right, so this is what I actually put together. Uh, this is the grow lamp on top of the... I do apologise for the light in here, it's not very good at all. I'll, I'll stand over here instead. This is a, a padded bag, uh, which uh, the cat, or one of the cats, was uh, tucked a line on. He's left it alone now, he seems to have lost interest in it. But I've left it there just in case he wants to use it. Uh, but I can't really move for boxes in here at the moment. Um, this has been the, the case for some weeks now, but never mind. Uh, so what I ended up with, um, initially, um, I had a very small box uh, that I tested with this, but I, uh, what I did is I bought myself some uh, sticky back uh, reflective paper, that, such the, the sort you'd stick on a kitchen wall, uh, and I completely lined this box out with this paper anyway. Um, because I found that just using the lamp on its own without any sort of reflective um, surfaces to bounce the light back it didn't do a great deal. Uh, so this is this is box version 2 basically. And uh, it does get very bright in here. And um, But it's as you can see it's not very big. It's big enough for an Atari case. I've had a 600XL case in here. Um, but I'm going to have to make something big. I'm going to have to make box version 3. And as you can see, it's only about a foot wide and a foot and a half long. Uh, so if I'm going to do anything like an ST case, I need something a lot bigger. But they do seem to be up to the job. And I like this grow light so much uh, that I actually bought another one, uh, which is supposed to be 2,000 watts. It's it's clearly not. I'm not sure if it's even effective as this one, but at least I've got a spare now. 
So, you know, I've got a spare. This is the 2000, the 2000 watt, it's, it's completely indistinguishable from the other one. <laughs> it's hard to write on the back. And this was box version one, which as you can see was a bit of a sorry uh, effort, but it, it did uh, it did what I needed it to do at the time. So when you actually turn the thing on, uh, it, it does get very bright in there. If we just move that along a bit, you can, oh, climb it. It is absolutely, unbelievably, uh, bright inside of there, so I'm not going to stick my head in it or look in it too long, but uh, yeah, it's very effective. So let's prepare something to put in. Now, one of the first things I did uh, to test this uh, whole idea was uh, this ST mouse. Actually, I did two. Of course, I forgot to take uh, before pictures, but they they do look a lot better than they did. I know they, they still have that sort of olive tint about them, which is, uh, ST and uh, XE plastic does tend to have uh, and it's quite difficult to capture on camera but they do look pretty good and they're a lot better than they were before and it took about once I'd refined the technique it took about no oh, three or four hours to get them looking like this so obviously the first thing we're going to do is uh, dismantle this little mouse here and uh, get the innards out of it and these are good little mice as well. They're much, much nicer than the um, the stock ST or Amiga mice. They're just, uh, I, can, I think I actually remember buying this at um, Goff's. Well, there's the there's the actual colour it should be on the inside. I remember buying this at Goff's in South Shields in about 1993 or sometime like that. Um, so there's the, in, the insides, the guts of the mouse. We'll put them to one side. And we're left with this. Um, we'll leave the locking wheel on. I think we might as well. There's nothing else we really need to take off. We can take that off, I suppose. Why not? Um, and that's it. We can leave everything else on there. Now, when I used to do uh, retro brighting on the windowsill, which is obviously impossible at the moment because there's simply no. Uh, natural sunlight to speak of at this time of the year um, and the whole reason I started experimenting with this light box was because I had uh, a machine uh, that was bought on eBay for a customer from uh, Switzerland um, and it needed to be retrobrided and it had to be done in the dark months so there was really no choice in the matter so I'm gonna make myself a nice little sheet of cling film and I never used to bother with a cling film really when I used to use the windowsill um, but with this being in a kind of an enclosed light chamber uh, I find that the cling film just helps basically it helps to stop the uh, cream peroxide which is what I'm going to use and this is awful stuff to cut absolutely horrendous I find it um, it just stops the it stops the peroxide from drying out which is the big problem you're gonna end up with uh, nasty streaking so we're gonna paint I've got a little tub here of 40 volt cream peroxide now I normally do this in the kitchen so I've brought it up here so you can have a good look so I'm gonna paint this stuff onto the mouse in fact, why don't I just do the top for now and then I can show you afterwards the difference between the two. Uh, try not to touch it. It is not a big deal if you get the stuff on your hands, but it uh, it does make your skin turn sort of blotchy white colour and it can be a bit, it can make your skin a bit sore. So I'll try not to get it on my hands if I can avoid it. I think that's reasonable. I mean what you could do is paint it on the actual cling film itself if you wanted to. I really want to sort of turn it over. i just put a bit on there like that just to make sure it gets good coverage. So I've moved it along and then I'll just flip it over like this and then just basically seal up the clean film and wrap it so that it's right round here 
There we are, so we've got a nice self-contained sealed little unit there. And I'm going to pop this into the box. Right, so I'm going to pop this into the little box. Like so. There he is. And then we're going to drag this over the, the hole in the top. And we're going to switch it on. And now we wait. So here we are after six hours under the grow lamp. Um, it didn't look like it was doing much at first, but uh, I left it in all night. Uh, it is very slow, uh, but it was pretty severely discoloured. Uh, it's not perfect, it hasn't really uh, got back to the original colour yet, but you could put it in upside down and stuff. And normally I would, uh, with stuff this size, I would put as much as I could into the box all at once to maximise use of the energy being used, but nevertheless, there it is. You can see it's different. Now, what, I know I left the bottom half untreated, but you can really see the difference there. But I've also got another mouse of the same model, which is similarly discoloured. Uh, so you can compare the two. This was very much in the same condition. Uh, you couldn't really tell them apart. Um, the bottom's not quite as bad on this one for some reason, but there it is. So you can see how it's changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash uh, this down. Okay, so here it is. We've cleaned it down and dried it off. And you can have a close look. And it's not going to win any beauty contests. It's not the original colour. We could probably put it back in for a bit longer. So hopefully it shows you that it does make a significant difference. It does work. There's probably better uh, grow lights or UV lights that you can get out there. I've seen a lot of conflicting information out there, actually, about what actually does cause the chemical reaction. Supposedly it was a UV light. Uh, but uh, I saw someone who was using a blue lamp. Uh, obviously this is supposed to be a full spectrum lamp and it does actually uh, work, albeit slowly, um, and heat seems to play a role as well. Uh, it does seem to work better when the, uh, the plastic is raised beyond uh, the ambient room temperature at least. But yeah, so hopefully that's uh, of some interest that shows that you can, with absolutely minimal investment, um, do retrobriding in the winter months uh, in the UK. So. I hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, it was just a little quick one. I wanted to share with you uh, what I'd been doing with this light box because I thought it was quite fun and uh, it has been very useful. It did enable me to um, de-yellow a 600XL which I'd bought in uh, the UK uh, for somebody abroad and uh, obviously I couldn't wait until the weather changed so I had to take the bull by the horns and figure out, and, and to be honest, this kind of glossy plastic, it seems to me to be very, very stubborn. It's more like the kind of plastic you would find um, in a sort of bathroom suite or something. It really has gone horribly yellow, and I think the uh, machine that I actually de-yellowed in the uh, light box, I'll show it to you actually. So this is the machine that I actually de-yellowed in the um, light box. The 600 XL. It was quite yellow along the front edge here and on the sides. Not not really bad. Not not exceptionally bad. But it was it was palpably yellow. I mean, it stood out like a sore thumb uh, on the shelf um, with the others. You can see it's got what it's, it's had the badge replaced as well. But I think it looks very very smart and um, quite acceptable. Uh, more than acceptable, in fact. And this was done in the little light box. Um, I wish I had a before picture, but sadly I don't. Uh, so there we go. So uh, yes, so you can probably find something, or you can experiment and find something far more effective and more cost effective uh, in terms of energy consumption uh, than this. But the highly reflective foil around the inside of the box seems to me to be absolutely essential. So you want it nice and warm in there and you want uh, the refraction to be as high as possible to really bounce the light around and that does help with um, getting the light to hit uh, the sides and, and places where it's not directly facing the light source. So there we go, it's for first first video of 2021, um, just, a, just a short one, just to let you know I'm, I'm still here 
uh, lots going on, been very, very, very busy lately, um, and lots of exciting things happening, which I'll probably cover uh, as the months draw on. But uh, in the meantime, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you for uh, subscribing to the channel. I know it's, it's gradually creeping up even when I'm not making content. That is hugely appreciated and very, very helpful indeed. And uh, hopefully I'll have time to make some more interesting videos uh, very, very soon. So until then, thank you again for watching and bye-bye for now.